In this session, we'll explore some workflows to add edge of pavement profiles to a finished grade centerline profile view. On my screen, I'm displaying a small part of a proposed roadway design. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, let me mention that I've turned off or hidden several design components to try and simplify the appearance of things. We'll start with a quick tour. Here in the plan view, we can see the existing ground surface called EG. Over here is an alignment representing the proposed road center line for State Route 25. The alignment also includes a pair of offset alignments that define the left and right edges of pavement. By using the offset alignments, if my center line alignment were to change, these offsets would update as well. Down here in the profile view, we can see the sampled existing ground center line profile and the finished grade center line profile for State Route 25. Over here, we can see the assembly that I'm using. Very simple in this case. I've got a left and right lane, each with their own daylight. Using the proposed centerline alignment profile and this assembly, I've built a proposed corridor model. At this time, the corridor is only displaying the edge of pavement feature lines. As you can see, the left and right lanes are targeting the offset alignments to obtain their widths. One last thing, this road design is super elevated, making the left edge of pavement higher than the right edge. Let's zoom out, and I'll center this on screen. All right, let's say I'm creating an exhibit, and I'd like to display the proposed edge of pavement profiles in my centerline profile view. Let's look at a quick and dirty technique first. If I go to the Home tab, in the Create Design panel, I'll open the Profile menu, and I'll come down and choose Create Profile from Corridor. I will then select a feature line in my corridor. In this case, I'll grab the left edge of pavement, and Civil 3D will create a profile from this feature line. By default, the profile will be named based on the corridor name, the corridor feature code, and I'm going to put dash LT at the end of this for left. I will then give it a profile style. We'll use the left edge of traveled way. I'm not going to add any labels at this time, and I'll click OK. Let's pan down quickly, and we can see that profile here in the profile view. Now I'm still in the command, let's pan this back up, and I'll grab the right edge of pavement. This profile will be the corridor name, corridor feature code, dash RT. For the style, I will select my right edge of traveled way style, no labels, and I'll click OK, and I'll press escape to get out of the command. Let me pan down, and we can see the left and right edge of pavement here in super elevation. As I pan this over, we can see how things are transitioning back to a normal crown. As you can see, in just a couple clicks, I was able to display those profiles in my profile view. This is a great technique to use when you need to create a one-off exhibit or do a quick design review. I say that because profiles created this way are static, meaning they won't update if your design changes. Next, we'll look at a technique that requires a couple more steps, but will give us profiles that are dynamically linked to the proposed design. I'm going to start by opening my undo time machine, and we'll go back to a point just before I made those profiles. Then I'm going to add a top surface to this corridor. I'll do that by selecting the corridor, and from the contextual ribbon, I'll choose Corridor Surfaces. I'll click to create a new surface. We'll call this surface Route 25 Top. I'll keep the default style. I'd like to build that surface from top links. I'll add that data. I'd like to add those as break lines. I will then go to Boundaries. I'll right-click on my surface and choose Corridor Extents as Outer Boundary. That way it won't triangulate outside the corridor boundary. When finished, I'll click OK, and we can see that surface on screen. Now, for the purpose of this example, we don't need to see the surface, so I'm going to hide it. I'll do that by selecting it. I'll go to the Properties palette, and we'll change its style to No Display. I'll press Escape when finished. Let's pan things over, and I'll zoom in. From a horizontal perspective, my lane edges are tied to these offset alignments, which are dynamic to the center line. From a vertical perspective, we just created a top surface, which is dynamic to the corridor model. I'm going to use these alignments to sample surface profiles from that top surface. We'll start with the left edge. I'll select the alignment, and from the launch pad panel, I'll choose Surface Profile. I'd like to use that alignment to sample the Route 25 top surface. I'll click Add. I'll choose Draw in Profile View, Create Profile View, and then I'll place this profile over to the right. This profile represents the left edge of pavement. Let's rename it. I'll do that by selecting it. I'll go to the Properties palette, and in the Name field, I'll just call this 25-EOP-Left. When finished, I'll press Escape. Now we'll take care of the right edge. 
I'll select the right offset alignment. We'll create a surface profile. I'll sample the top surface. I'll click Add, Draw in Profile View, Create Profile View, and I'll place this profile view down below. There's the profile for the right edge of pavement. We'll rename this. I'll do it by selecting it. We'll go to the Properties palette, and we'll call it 25-EOP-Right, and I'll press Escape. Next, I'll superimpose these profiles into my main profile view. We'll do that by selecting the profile view, and from the contextual ribbon, I'll choose Superimposed Profile. I'll select the left edge of pavement first, and then I'll select my desired profile view. I'm going to keep the defaults for the limits and accuracy, and I'll click OK. Let's press Escape, and if I zoom in, we can see that profile has been superimposed. Let's change the style. I'll do that by selecting it. We'll go to the Properties palette, and for Style, I'm going to choose the Left Edge of Traveled Way style, and I'll press Escape. Let's select this profile view again. I'll choose Superimposed, and I'll grab the Right Edge of Pavement this time, and I'll place it in this view. We'll keep the defaults and click OK. I'll press Escape. We now have the Right Edge of Pavement profile. I'm going to change its style. I'll select it, and we'll go to the Properties palette, and I'll select the Right Edge of Traveled Way style and I'll press Escape. Let's back up. Now at this point, I no longer need these profile views, so I'm going to delete the views. I'll do that by selecting each view, and I'll press Delete. Note that deleting a profile view does not delete the profile. I need to keep those. I am merely deleting the vessel used to display those profiles. Let's pan this over, and I'll zoom in. And at this point, I have a dynamic pair of Edge of Pavement profiles that will update when my design changes. I'm going to click Undo to put things back. It's important to note that even though this example utilized Edge of Pavement profiles, you can use these techniques to display profiles for many of your linear design elements. All right, now that we have these additional profiles displaying in this profile view, you may be wondering how to incorporate their elevational data along with these labels down below. We'll look at that in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.